in this video we are going to discuss about transportation problem and its modeling transportation problem is a special class of linear programming problem in which goods are shipped from a set of sources to a set of destinations subject to supply of source and demand of destinations such that the total cost of transportation is minimized it's used to determine the number of units to be transported from origin to destination so that supplies will be consumed and demand satisfied at an overall minimum cost. In this definition, there are two statements that need special emphasis. The first statement is transportation problem is a class of linear programming problem and the second statement is it's a special class. Why transportation problem is a class of linear programming problem? And the other question, why it's a special class? Let's count two reasons for each. For the first question, that's why transportation problem is a class of linear programming problem. The first reason is that its objective is to minimize transportation cost. As we discussed in the previous five episodes of linear programming problem, its objective is to minimize undesirable parameters like cost or maximize desirable parameters like profit. Since the objective of transportation problem is to minimize cost, it's considered as a class of linear programming problem. The second reason is that the steps of transportation problem are similar to those of linear programming problems. Transportation simplex method, like simplex method of linear programming problem, is a two-phase procedure. The first phase is finding initial feasible solution, and phase two is proceeding iteratively to make improvements in the solution until optimal solution is reached. These are the two main reasons for considering transportation problem as linear programming problems. The second question, why transportation problem is a special class of linear programming problem? The first reason for this question is that transportation problems use difference methods, or so-called heuristics, to find the initial feasible solution. These methods are Northwest Corner Cell Method, Least Cost Cell Method, and Vogel's Approximation Method. We will illustrate each of these methods when we solve problems. The second reason is that transportation problem use transportation tablet rather than a family linear programming model. The network structure of transportation problems enable experts to develop transportation tablet which is useful in modeling a class of problems in coincise manner rather than using the familiar model with explicit objective function and constraints. Just like other linear programming problem, transportation problem starts from modeling. So let's have a brief look about transportation model. Transportation problem can be expressed either by network model or transportation tabling. Network model is a model containing nodes of each source and destination and arcs for the routes from the sources to destination. Each arc contains two pieces of information, the transportation cost per unit and the amount shipped. Once we have a network model of transportation problem, we can easily develop transportation tabling from it. Transportation tableau is a table containing rows corresponding to supply nodes and columns corresponding to demand nodes, meaning number of rows is equal to number of supply nodes and number of columns is equal to number of destination nodes. Each cell contains unit transportation cost of each route and the amount to be shipped. The sources are in the left-hand side margin of the table and the entries in the right-hand margin indicates the supply at each origin. The destinations are at the top margin of the table, and the entries in the bottom margin indicate the demand in each destination. For better illustration of these models, let's support our discussion by examples of transportation model. Medoc Ethiopia plans to build three chemical fertilizer processing factories and four distribution centers in Ethiopia. The factories were to build in Kombolcha, Redawa, and Ambo cities with monthly production capacity of 50,000, 40,000, and 60,000 tons, respectively. The distribution centers will be built in Addis Ababa, Makale, Asosa, and Bahirpar, each with the respective forecasted demand of 45,000, 30,000, 35,000, and 40,000 tons. The unit transportation cost from each source to destination is given in the table below. Table 1, unit transportation cost. The origins, Kombolcha, Dredawa, and Ambo. Distribution centers, Adisaba, Makale, Bahardar, and Asosa. Unit transportation force from Kombolcha to Adisaba is 3. Unit transportation cost from Kombolcha to Makale, 4. From Kombolcha to Bahardar, 5 and from Kombolcha to Asosa 8. 
Unit transportation cost from Dre Dawa to Addis Ababa is 6, from Dre Dawa to Makale 7, from Dre Dawa to Bahardar 7, and from Dre Dawa to Asosa is 8. Unit transportation cost from Ambo to Addis Ababa is 2, from Ambo to Makale is given us 7, from Ambo to Bahardar is given us 6, and from Ambo to Asosa is given us 6 again. The question is develop a network model and transportation table. First, let's develop a network model. As we discussed above, source and destinations are represented by nodes. In a network model, source nodes are usually set in the left-hand margin like this. That is, we have three sources, Ombolcha, Redawa, and Ambo, arranged vertically from top to bottom. The supply from each source is written to the left of the source. Some authors put these supplies at the right-hand margin. Practically, it doesn't matter whether we use it right or the left-hand margin. For our discussion, let's use this left-hand margin. The supply from Kombolcha is 50,000. Supply from Dredao is 40,000. Supply from Ambo is 60,000. Nodes of destination has to be arranged vertically to the right-hand margin like this. Some others again put destination nodes at the top margin. The forecasted demand of each destination has to be put to the right of each destination like this. Adisava has a forecasted demand of 45,000. Makale has a forecasted demand of 30,000. Ahadar has a forecasted demand of 40,000. And Asusa has a forecasted demand of 35,000. Now, what's left is to draw an arc showing the transportation of goods from source to destination. Fertilizer from Kombolcha is shipped to each of the four destinations, that's Adisava, Makale, Bahardar, and Asosa. As we already discussed, each arc carries two pieces of information, unit transportation cost and amount shipped. The unit transportation cost from Kombolcha to Adisava is given as 3. Unit transportation cost from Kombolcha to Makale is given as 4. Unit transportation cost from Kombolcha to Bahardar is given as 5. And the unit transportation cost from Kombolcha to Asosa is given as 8. The amount to be shipped to each of these destinations is to be determined. But to designate each shipment by symbol, let's give number for each source and each destination. That's Kombolcha is source 1, Dredawa source 2, and Ambo source 3. Likewise, let's assign number to each destination. Adsalva destination 1, Makale destination 2, Bahadur destination 3, and Asosa destination 4. So let's assign the amount shipped from Kombolcha to Adsalva as x11. That's x amount shipped from source 1 to destination 1. Amount shipped from Kombolcha to Makale, X12. That's X amount shipped from Source 1 to Destination 2. Amount shipped from Kombolcha to Bahardar, X13. That's X amount shipped from Source 1 to Destination 3. And amount shipped from Kombolcha to Asosa as X14. X amount shipped from Source 1 to Destination 4. Similarly, the shipment from source 2 to each destination, unit cost of shipment and amount shipped can be expressed like this. Finally, shipment from third source, transportation cost per unit and amount shipped can be expressed like this. So this is the final network model with arcs and nodes. Once the network model is developed, it's simple to drive transportation table from it. As it is mentioned in the explanation, number of sources is equal to number of rows of transportation table. Since the number of sources are 3, the table has 3 rows. Number of destination is equal to number of columns. In other words, the table has 4 columns. Thus, let's start to sketch the table by drawing a table with 3 rows and 4 columns. One of the information that each cell of the table contain is transportation cost per unit. Row 1 contains unit costs from source 1 to the four distribution centers that can be obtained from the arc of the network model as 3, 4, 5, and 8. Row 2 contains unit costs from source 2 to the four distribution centers. Again, that can be obtained the arc of the network model as 6, 7, 7, and 8. Row 3 contains unit costs from source 3 to each of the four distribution centers. That's 2, 7, 6, 6. Next, let's fill each cell by the amount of shipped from source to the four destination centers in a small box at the top left corner of each cell like this. Row 1 contains amount shipped from source 1 to four destinations that can be obtained from a network model as X11, X12, X13, and X14. Row 2 contains amount shipped from source 2 to the four destinations, that's X21. 
x22, x23, and x4. Row 3 contains the amounts shipped from source 3 to the 4 destination that's x31, x32, x33, and x34. Next, we have to put the sources to the left margin of each row because a row represents the source and their supply to the right margin of the row. Source 1 is Kombolcha, amount supplied from Kombolcha is 50,000. Source 2 is Dredao, amount supplied from Dredao is 40,000. Source 3 is Ambo, amount supplied from Ambo is 60,000. What's left is destinations and the forecasted demand of each destination. As we know, columns represent destinations. Hence, the name of each destination or distribution center has to be written on the top margin of each column and their respective forecasted demand in the corresponding bottom margin. Column 1 represents distribution center 1, that's Addis Ababa, and its forecasted demand is 45,000. Column 2 represents the second distribution center, that's Makane, and its forecasted demand is 30,000. Column 3 represents the third distribution center, that's Baharda, and its forecasted demand is 40,000. Column 4 represents the fourth distribution center, that's Asosa, and its, its forecasted demand is 35,000. This is the final transportation table for the example. It is this W we use in solving transportation problem by using transportation simplex method. At the end, let's see types of transportation problem. There are two types of transportation problem. The first one is balanced transportation problem. If demand and supply are equal, the transportation problem is called balanced transportation problem. The second type of transportation problem is unbalanced transportation problem. If demand and supply are not equal, that problem is called unbalanced transportation problem. Transportation algorithm is based on the assumption that the model is balanced, meaning the total demand equals the total supply. If the model is unbalanced, we can always add a dummy source or a dummy destination to restore balance. Dummy source is a source with zero supply and dummy destination is a destination with zero demand. We will discuss in detail on how to add dummy source or dummy destination to restore balance when we solve unbalanced transportation problem. That's all for this part. See you later. Please subscribe, like and share this page.